So we created a WordPress account here for free on WordPress.com. We looked at some of the important settings. Well, we're going to need to get used to a few things here on our WordPress dashboard. We've got the, the dashboard link. We've got something called posts and something called pages. So click on the dashboard. Whenever you log into your site, you're going to see this screen. We'll give you some items here, such as statistics. So here you'll be able to tell your most popular pages, where your traffic is coming from, and such. Um, you'll see quick activity in this screen and so forth. This is the dashboard. Um, the big idea is we're going to be either in the dashboard to edit our site, or we're going to be on the front end of our site. We're going to be either in the dashboard, the back end, or the front end. So here under the dashboard area, if you hover over my site, very top left corner, click Visit Site, and then that will pull up your version of your site with your theme. This is what it will look like to people when they visit your site, which in my case is victorsbakeryblog.wordpress.com. Nothing really here on mine. It's brand new. If you hover over my site again and you get... and you click on... Um, might have changed this a little bit. There's a button to go back to the dashboard. There's no one more. It's weird. Yeah. There should be a button that says dashboard. Yeah. Well, one way to get back to it is if you click on settings down at the bottom. No, that doesn't work. Um, blog posts. No. Yeah, that's odd. I wouldn't keep. I wouldn't do back because what if I go four levels into my site? I have to I press did, back I, five I times. Yeah, that's why I said don't do that. Okay, well, here's one way. Can, it's um, when you go to my site. Um, in mind that I'm working on my own, there is a button called uh, WP Admin. And then you can go there. You can, you know, I, I don't know why it doesn't appear there. Go to it. You should go there and you can go back to the. Go to which one? And you want my site. She's right. But you don't have that one. Yeah, you don't have Normally, that. it should be in there. Maybe because I haven't verified my email. Remember, it asks you to verify oh, your email. Yes. So there's supposed to be the WP admin link. Let's assume it's there. If you see it, go ahead and click on it. If you don't see it, here's one way to get to it. Let's say you just go over to sharing, and then you'll see right there WP admin. So that's not the most direct way, but in any event, we want to click the WP admin link. It should be on that menu. I'm not sure why it's not on mine, possibly because I haven't verified my site. So one way to avoid this is You can have one tab of your web browser set to your dashboard. And remember, you can right-click a link and select New Tab. So one tab could be your dashboard to easily keep it open all the time. And the other tab could be the actual site, because the way it looks like to people is different than the way it looks like to us as, a, as an administrator. So to avoid this, you can right-click a link, open a new link or tab. Depending on your web browser, it might call it different things. But I'll open a new tab. So this tab here is my dashboard. This is dashboard. And this one here is my actual website. That way I don't have to remember where, where do I go. So anyway, we need to be able to become skilled in looking at the back end and looking at the front end. This is the back end, the control panel. The front end is this, what it looks like to people. 
So in the back end, in the dashboard, I want to talk about the two big ideas of posts and pages. Hover over pages and select all pages. There's already a default page for us and about page. So the big idea with pages is that these are screens of your website that don't change that often. The about page is not going to change that often. The contact us page is not going to change that often. Those are going to be most likely pages. What will change often is the blog, and those are posts. So let's just take a look here. We've got one page, the about page. So if you hover over, I don't like how this is all hidden until you hover over, because then at first glance, if you don't know this, it doesn't make sense. But if you hover over most pages or posts, you get a menu here. So if you put your mouse over about, you see edit, quick edit, trash, and view it. Hover over the about page and click edit. This is what's already been written for us. This is an example page. Unlike posts, which are displayed in your blog's front page, in the order they're published, pages are better suited for more timeless content that you want to be easily accessible, like your about or contact info. And click the edit link to make changes. Okay, so there's another definition of what a page is. Question? Sorry, somehow I can't get to that page. Are you in the dashboard? No, I'm in where it says all right, wherever you're at, you want to click on the link. You should see the link that says WP Admin. When I click on my site, I don't get that, that sidebar thing that shows all the We're looking at pages at the moment, and then the about page. Yes, sorry. So this page here is for more timeless content, like an about page, a content contact page, etc. And so, if we wanted to make any changes here about really what our page is about, we can easily click here and change something. So let's say we will change the current about page to really suit what our, what our site is about. So I'm editing the about page, and there's an editing area here like, a, like any word processor. So I'm going to select all that text that's already there and just delete it. And for the moment, write one sentence about what my page is about. Again, this is part of helping your SEO. As you put out content to the world about what you're about, the search engines will find that, and hopefully then rank you if you explain what you're about. So I'm going to say uh, simply founded in 1989 Victor's Bakery is East Lakes premier gluten-free bakery. I'm not going to go into a lot of details here, just a quick simple sentence. I could go and add a little bit of styling, like maybe I want um, the term gluten-free to stand out so I can make it bold. You can select your text and you've got an editing menu on the first strip here. There's bold or italics strike through. We can make bullet points, numbered lists, quotes. Here's a little bit of alignment. Maybe I want this to be centered instead of to the left. Maybe I want to add a link. Maybe the word gluten-free is going to be a link to take me to one of my latest gluten-free cupcakes. So you can select something, click that little chain, and add your link. We will add a link together, but I'm just doing an overview of our editing features. There's something here that kind of looks like uh, the paint in the middle of a road. This is the, the read more tag. I'll get back to this, but it's very important. 
spell check is right there, proofread. And you might say, well, this is pretty limiting. Maybe I should write my my uh, articles in in Word and paste them over. Well, actually, we do have a few more options. The very last uh, button there, toggle toolbar. If you click that, you get a few more options, such as a style of text. We don't have 200 fonts to choose from, but we have a few styles. We also have underline style. I don't recommend to use that because it looks like a link. We often see text online that is underlined being a link, so I wouldn't suggest that. We can do justify, so if you want your text, your paragraphs to look nice and justified, you can do that. A little bit of colorization. Look at that, I can add colors. Sometimes when I'm copying and pasting, it brings in too much of the original formatting. The font and the color, and it, and it doesn't look like my style of my site. So I can actually paste as text. So strip away the extra formatting from where I copied and just paste the text. If I didn't do that after the fact, I can select text, clear the formatting, and it goes back to plain my style. I can add symbols here, special characters. Indenting and such. Oh, and there's my undo button. So if I make a mistake, I can undo it or redo it. So still, not a lot of editing options, but it really is about your content rather than presentation. The presentation will come from the theme. If I wanted to add a picture, can you figure out how to add a picture? Well, I don't have any button here for a picture, but I do have here, Add Media. So if I click Add Media, I can upload a file. I can upload JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, PDFs, Docs, PowerPoints, and something called a key. Oh, that's a keynote for the Mac. Then I have three gigabytes to upload. Three gigabytes of hard drive space. So I'm not going to get too fancy yet. I would do that more for the post. But here, I'm just going to write a little text maybe add a color. I have not verified my email yet, so I don't have a button here that says update or publish. So I, I actually cannot save this. That's one of the reasons why I want to verify my email. At the least, though, I can click preview changes and then it'll show me that page in the context of my theme. So I'm not actually going to be able to update this. I haven't verified my email. That's okay. I'm still just kind of practicing. If you do have the ability to update, you can go ahead and update. Um, Richard, where, where on this page would you put your phone number, address, or whatever? You could put it on the About page, but we're about to create a contact page, and that would be the better place to do it. So we had one page, an About page, but I also want the Contact page. So we have at least three ways to create something. Notice I'm currently in the Pages screen, and I have Add New Page. I also have at the top, I'm editing a page, but I can Add New Page. And you're also going to see an icon on the top right corner, a little pencil. But the most direct way at the moment is I, I see Add New on the left side. So just click Add New Page. If it asks about leaving the page, I want to say yes. I can't save it, so I'm going to lose this, but that's okay. I'm going to leave this page. So now I have a blank document. 
it asks for a title at the top. What's the name of this page? This will automatically then create a link. So whatever I call this will be my link. So to talk a little bit about SEO, we want to title our pages and posts with keywords. Keywords are very useful for SEO. Um, and so if this is our contact page, a great keyword for us to use is contact. Or contact us. I'm going to try this for a moment. Contact us and then click in the text editing area here. Let's call it contact us. What should happen then is that you get the permalink. This is the direct link to that one page of my site. It's a real life URL, a real internet address. And it ends right here, contact-us. So we don't have to worry about creating file names. It's just going to take the title that we wrote and add it for us. It'll put it lowercase and with dashes, which is the modern recommendation for SEO. No spaces in our file names, and dashes preferred over underscores. No special characters. If I called this contact us, it would not put the exclamation points. Now actually, what's becoming much more of a standard is for your contact us page to be called contact. So we can do two things. We can type here contact and it may automatically update here. Sometimes it doesn't. So we also have an edit button here. But what I'm getting at is I could call the, the page itself. The, the word contact us will appear on screen. So we, I could call this contact our cozy shop and have the address simply be contact because contact is the one that's becoming more of a standard. Simply contact. I don't want it to be victorsbakery.com slash contact dash our dash cozy dash shop. That's not going to help you. Simply contact as your permalink, as your website address will be preferable. But at the top, that text appearing for the user, that's fine. So I guess you can click the yellow or click the edit button. In this contact page, I would put all the information that you think would be useful for your users to know. So if I'm a bakery, I might want them to know the address to my bakery, my phone number, my email, maybe my Twitter account. If I'm a blogger, I probably want to share all of that as well. Maybe I don't have an address, physical address, but I want to share here these different contact methods. Question? Um, it's just, um one word or like uh, um, if I contact us gonna be all together in the same no. dash gonna be all divided you're going to use dashes whenever there's words uh, that would need a space you want to use a dash so I would not put contact us as one word okay. it's gonna think about it as a weird word a weird word called contactus no you want contact dash us two words okay. Did you say previously, I think maybe the first class, that it may be best to have a separate phone number and website and so forth, separate from your own personal? Yeah, if, you, if you're a blogger and you do want people to contact you via phone, maybe you don't want your personal phone number. So you can get, and you can go to look at this for free on your own, voice.google.com. Google can give you a free phone number. It is tied to an existing phone number, but the cool thing about this is that you create a Google Voice number, and you can set it up for, for, so that anyone that calls that phone number will automatically go to voicemail, and that you will get a text with that voicemail, or an email with that voicemail. Or you can set it that if someone dials that Google Voice number, it automatically is forwarded to your cell phone number, 
and your home number and your office number. All three phones will ring, and then you can answer it. So whatever contact information right here will will be will be relevant, will work for you. So I'm on one, two, three fake street. Question. Yeah, um, where will we link related to C uh, S E O um, helps uh, you need to choose carefully the word when we edit. So could you uh, well, I did. I said that uh, you're going to be using keywords to help get found. So in this one, there's only so many keywords we can use here. Contact. It's clearly going to be contact. When we look at, for example, writing an actual article a little bit later, and uh, I, need, I need to get found, I need that article to get found, I'm going to develop a title that uses the keywords effectively. We're going to have to have a balancing act, however, where I don't want to put 20 keywords in my title because suddenly we're spamming. So when we actually write the article, it will make more sense. But think about one or two, maybe three, preferably one, keyword that really affects or defines, that is, what a particular page or post is about, something that is human-readable, and... Um, as we actually write the posts, we'll see what effective keywords might be. You could put your email address here, but I would not recommend putting your email address naked out there on the internet because there's these spam bots that are running around 24 hours a day that whenever they find anything that looks like an email address, they harvest it, put it in the database, start sending you spam, sell that database, and you get more spam. So every email address in the world has a particular format. Something at something dot something. Right? Victor at victor.com. Sales at Toys R Us dot net. Um, products at Amazon dot biz. They all have that format. So I would not put your email address like that. But you do want people to contact you via email. Well, look at this. WordPress.com has a built-in method for contact forms. That's more secure. The spam bots will be stopped at a certain point because this contact form requires input, verification, and then that message is sent to your inbox. So if I say add a contact form here, we want the person's name, their email, their website, their comment. Maybe I don't want their website. I can just click the minus sign. Maybe I want their email first, so I can drag it up here. I want a new field. I also want to ask for, let's say on the right side here, a checkbox, a drop-down menu. Um, text area so we can craft a contact form uh, within within our articles here our posts or pages and what email address to send this to well I put in my email address so that's for the user not for you exactly this is the user is going to send me an email and oh, Mm -hmm. And then that form there, um, that code there will become a form when people actually see it. So if I click preview on the top right, someone visits my contact, our cozy shop, you're going to see that stuff and this stuff in here to send me an email. Yes, if you have a self hosted uh, account, what you want to do is. Um, install this plugin that I really like called Contact Form 7. That's for WordPress. So it gives you very powerful, more powerful than this one here. So for your self-hosted WordPress accounts, I recommend Contact Form 7. It lets you capture different amounts of user input. It can be sent to more than one email address. Um, you have the ability to add captchas, 
which are those little random numbers and codes that help prevent spammers. So contact form 7. Do they charge with an extra service? No. Many of these plugins are free, and most of their features will be available to you. Some extra features, those might be a fee. And the fees for these extra plugin features range from $10 to $100. You have to check each particular theme and the features, and if it has the one that you need, maybe purchase it. But most of the time, for most of the companies that I work with, uh, that I do a website for them, most of the time we can get by with the free version of most plugins. We definitely have to buy some premium plugins and premium themes here and there, but it, uh, it works out. So I'm crafting my contact form, my contact page. On the top right corner, I have not verified yet, so I don't have all the options. But you might see a button that says Save Draft, or Publish, or Preview. If you click Preview, it will show it to you what it would look like in your theme. So I click Preview, I get a brand new tab. Okay, looks good. I go back to the tab of editing. If I click Save Draft, it will save it, and I believe WordPress has an auto-save feature. I think you have to save it the first time, and then it's going to automatically save maybe every 10 minutes or so. So let's say I'm not ready for this to be public, because we have a real website. People can find victorsbakeryblog.wordpress.com right now. It is real. You might not be ready to be real yet. So you've got your save draft. You can click save draft, and it'll be saving it uh, until you're ready to publish. If you're ready to publish, you'll also have the button Publish. I have not, uh, I have not verified my email, so I can't publish. So all I can do is save draft. So we spent a little bit of time talking about pages. This is the evergreen content. This is stuff that's not going to change that often. You're not going to change the contact page unless you move locations or phone numbers and that sort of thing. Your about page is not really going to change. You're not going to need to really change it unless really the story or the employees change or whatever you're doing in about us. The home page might change a little bit, but it's going to be your pages. I'm sorry, your posts. Your posts, your blog posts that change. And when we come back next time, well, I'll give you this handout. We'll start to write blog posts and optimize for them and talk about tags and categories and all that important stuff for SEO. That's what we'll do next time because now we have a bit of a foundation in, in WordPress. There's still plenty to learn, but now you've got an account. I recommend. There's no homework in, in this class or most of my classes, but here's your homework. You're going to go home and you're going to log into WordPress and you're going to explore it a little bit. You're going to click on this and that and try this and maybe click help on the top right corner. Because even if we had four full weeks of WordPress, there's still much more WordPress we can learn. So we're going to end the main lecture. We'll take general questions. We'll do lab time. And when we come back next week, we'll write the posts and optimize more and so forth. General question? The order of the pages. The order of the pages. At currently they're alphabetical. Exactly. Currently they're alphabetical. We'll we'll get to it, but you can start to explore here under your appearance item menus. That's how you can change the order of your menus. Another general question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about the best strategies for keywords and such, definitely, next time. Alright, so for the moment we'll end the main lecture, and we'll do it again next time.